Um, well, yeah, hello everybody. Um, obviously the title was clickbait, um, but I'm still glad you showed up. Uh, and there is some truth to it. And I'm gonna, well, I'm, it's really a case study of, uh, of how software uh, sometimes dies, sometimes is buried, sometimes uh, is reborn, sometimes is resurrected, or just has a, a comeback or t uh, shows up in, uh, in ways that you didn't expect. Um, my name is Christian Glombeck. I'm a senior software engineer in OpenShift at Red Hat. Um, I am uh, on the OKD Streams team, and we maintain the OKD community releases, which is the community version of OpenShift. Um, yeah, and I actually started my my journey into uh, software engineering with with almost CoreOS, with with one of the predecessors to CoreOS, which was Atomic Coast. And I'll I'll get to that now. So really, uh, the past of CoreOS, and I'm not gonna give you a whole history lesson on, on CoreOS because I wasn't there for the um, CoreOS, CoreOS, Container Linux CoreOS time. Um, that was the original CoreOS. Uh, it was a Gen 2 based um, system. Um, it was then renamed to Container Linux, uh, at least the, uh, the community variant. And then uh, Red Hat bought the company CoreOS and uh, we created a new operating system that took the name of the predecessor, but really it was a new operating system. And that operating system was based mostly on the Atomic project. Um, some folks may still remember the Fedora Atomic Host um, releases. I think there was also a Red Hat product um, in there somewhere. And really we took the best of, of these both worlds, uh, or at least we tried to do that. And I think we, we did pretty well. Um, in, in taking the best from uh, to create the new, the new current uh, CoreOS. So really, what, what do we have today? What, what is, uh, what, what's happening in CoreOS land? Um, the main Fedora CoreOS release, which is the upstream, um, leverages all kinds of, uh, of uh, software. Uh, it's, it's built with RPM OS tree, so it's image-based um, or hybrid image-based. Um, you can rebase from one image, which is a digest uh, in a repository, to another one. Um, and that, that really, yeah, that changed how we deployed the, and provisioned the systems, and it really made things much easier for us. Um, there's obviously things like uh, Podman, which is our uh, main container runtime. Um, in Fedora CoreOS, we actually still ship Mobi. Um, which is Docker. Um, and uh, Ignition is our uh, first boot provisioning tool, and we took that from the original uh, Container Linux CoreOS. Uh, so that's a declarative way of configuring your, the machine you want to provision up front. You have a config file, and that essentially gets written to disk. It defines uh, disk co uh, yeah, file contents, file, uh, all kinds of things uh, you want you want written to disk um, that gets put in ignition config and then on the first boot the ignition binary writes it uh, while it's still in the init RAM stage and writes it to disk and then reboots into that newly configured uh, pristine uh, operating system the way you want it. Uh, recently we introduced uh, something that really is a big leap in how you can work with CoreOS which is Coro as a layering. Um, and it's been, it's been mentioned a couple of times in other talks today, but really what it is, uh, it enables the operating system like a container image because the operating system is a container image. So you can, uh, you can import it with a from directive in a Docker file and then uh, RPM OS tree install other things, other RPMs on top of the base, which could be Fedora CoreOS um, or uh, RHEL CoreOS or the newly introduced or stream CoreOS. And that really makes it easy to use the base that the community provides, the Fedora CoreOS or CentOS Stream CoreOS, and make your own version very specific to your needs. Uh, and a great, uh, a great example of that, how, how a community starts to appear around uh, things like this is uh, Universal Blue, uh, you blew it, <laughs> you blew .it. 
um, and they actually, uh, it's, a, it's a community project, and they actually uh, use CoreOS layering to build derived images from the standard uh, stock Fedora CoreOS. I think they put in NVIDIA drivers and things like, uh, yeah, the things that we can't ship uh, in the Fedora repos. And they configure it for different use cases, gaming and workstation. I, they have a couple of images there. Um, what we end up with, or what we current, currently have, are three main uh, versions that we officially release and, and distribute of CoreOS, which is the upstream Fedora CoreOS, and then uh, the downstream uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux CoreOS, RHEL CoreOS, Arcos, um, and we recently introduced a midstream distro, uh, which is CentOS Stream CoreOS. So that's essentially uh, for, for RHEL CoreOS. It's about six months ahead of, of what's going to get into RHEL. Meaning the way this works is um, RPM OS 3 builds images by consuming R RPMs, and it creates an image out of these RPMs. So everything in the image is, uh, is part of an RPM. And, um, so we, for these three composers, uh, three different composers, we use, uh, for the CentOS Stream one, we use the CentOS Stream RPM uh, YAM repos to pull RPMs from, uh, for Fedora CoreOS, it's the, uh, it's the Fedora repos, and for RHEL, it's the RHEL repos, but the manifests that define the, the RPM lists, the RPMs that you want to include are actually the same, or mostly the same. For ECOS and ARCOS, CentOS Stream R uh, CoreOS, or Stream CoreOS is SCOS, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core as Arcos, um, they're actually exactly the same manifests. Um, it's just a rebuild with a different set of packages, different version, uh, different versions of the packages with different sources. One com comes from the CentOS community, the other from the Fedora community. Um, and we're pretty happy with where we are right now. It's especially the layering and all the, uh, the new goodies we, we've uh, recently introduced. It, it really uh, feels really nice to work with with the stack, but we're not finished. And this is kind of where the next death is around the corner, right? Um, is it going to be, wh who's it go what's it going to be? Um, wh what's going to go, what's, what's going to come next? And that really is, um, the, the, only, the only constant is change. And so what's next? What, what, what do we want to do? What do you want to do? There a lot of interesting projects in, in the realm that we kind of have our finger on the pulse or you know, are, are following or definitely want to include. Um, there's things like, uh, can we make these layered images supportable? Actually, maybe do something like build one common base and then have different layers um, that share the same common base but that do different things. So you could imagine one uh, derived image for the, for the uh, Kubernetes stack, one for workstations, and one for IoT devices, for example. They could all share the same, would be very easy to reproduce and to also change if you're unhappy and really want to derive. Again, you can derive from a derived image. It doesn't really matter, um, because in the end, it's just shipped as a container image. And that container image you can use as a container image, but it's a bit special because it also includes a kernel. So when you run it as a container image, the kernel doesn't do anything. But when you use RPM OS tree to rebase to that image, then the image is actually written to disk and the system is rebooted into that image. Then it's not in a container anymore. We really use the container as a distribution mechanism for the images because container registry are ubiquitous today. Um, so what, what are these things? Here, UKI, Unified Kernel Images. Um, that is something I'm really excited about. I think uh, it'll, it'll make um, our operating system safer because with that, we'll be able to, uh, to do attestation from the, from the start to the end, essentially. It'll be much easier uh, than with the current uh, bootloader stack that we have. Obviously, there are different interests here, different teams, different uh, requirements from customers, from community users. Um, so really, nothing is set in stone yet. And we don't even know how, how it's going to look when we, when we get there. So really, this is the time to shape this. Um, there's other things like uh, Boot C, which could replace RPM OS tree sometime. Um, 
and yeah, really um, a lot of, uh, and compose FS, which will enable FS Verity um, for our use case in, uh, in PM OS tree or even boot C based uh, image distributions. Um, and really, what, what's the takeaway? What do I want to say with all of this? Um, and especially with the looking into the future, right? We can't change the past, but we definitely can uh, do our best to, to shape the future. So really, uh, what I want to say is be the change you want to see in a, pro in a software project and open API, right? <laughs> uh, that's like, yeah. Uh, the quote is not by Mahatma Gandhi. Um, <laughs> And that really closes the circle here um, back to this conference's motto, which is define future. You can define your own future and be part of it. And I'd, I'd like to invite you to do that uh, and to join any of these projects um, here or any other, join the community around it and uh, contribute to open source. Thank you very much. So, well, there is, oh yeah, the, the question, question is, uh, is it still, is RPM OS tree within a container still valuable? Because you don't really need the package manager inside a container, I guess. And that is essentially where things like boot C comes in. That doesn't ship an, a package manager. In RPM OS tree, RPM OS tree is both the server side that builds, that composes an image, but it's also the client side package manager that installs more images. So it's kind of, there isn't a clear split in the code base. It's just one binary that does both. And with boot C, the build part would be separate. And boot C would know about RPMs. It would just know how to out an OS tree native container to disk and boot into it. And maybe upgrade to the next one. So yes, there is, like maybe it doesn't make sense going forward. Maybe there are use cases where we want the the layering to happen in, in a container build, because you can do these layered builds with any, with Portman build, Docker build, on a cluster, anywhere. They don't need to be privileged, um, which is also different to the, the base compose, needs to be pr a privilege because we need virtualization enabled in the, in the builder and run some stuff in a, in a nested, uh, yeah, nested vert way. Um, and maybe that, that's going to be solved by Bootsy, some, some of that at least. So definitely, there's, uh, th there's a lot going on. And maybe in the future, we won't even have a package manager on these immutable systems. Yeah. Thank you.